What's going on everyone? It's Blake again with Ryan. We're here for a special review, an insane review. Big thanks to Nick, the owner of the Focus RS, uh, for letting us review it today. Like always, local is sponsoring this video, so check out the Instagram and Facebook. So the car behind us is a 2017 Focus RS. We're more than happy to review it and uh, let's see how it goes. Focus RS. <laughs> I was gonna say Subaru, but no. 2.3 liter Eco Boost, 350 horsepower with equal torque. Not getting on it, I would say it reminds me of like a Mazda Speed 3 without getting on it at all, yeah. just for basic driving because it's really like the clutch is really light and nice. It's extremely comfortable, much better interior than the Subaru. Backfire, third gear with oil pressure, uh, oil temp, and boost. Yep. Not too bad. Four piston front Brembo brakes. Extremely touchy. But they stop you pretty good, I'm guessing. I haven't really tried it yet. <laughs> Gonna scared to go through the windshield. Okay, so, normal sport, track, and drift mode. Oh, and is someone gonna run us over? That's real nice. This specific car, the 2017 RS, came out at around 40. D different dealers will play their games with pricing on these depending on how long they hold on to them. Working at a Ford dealership for about a year now, um, I've come to see only about two of these um, that we've sold. And the reason being is we get about one to two allocations a year and that might go up now that they're becoming more popular. But for now it's about one to two. Um, and the first one we got actually about a year ago, I made a video about it with Ryan, or Ryan came to check it out and that was insane. And here we are one year later reviewing it. So again, big thanks to Nick. This is awesome. I always dreamed about driving this car and we're on some amazing beach roads too. As far as pricing, these things start pretty high, but that's because they're pretty rare. Back overseas, the RS has been out for quite some time and the US hasn't had them. So with the recent introduction of this car, the hype was insane. I was so excited when it came out, when I saw it, when I sat in it, and now driving it, it's insane. It feels planted, it feels good, it feels awesome. We don't know yet, but I feel like this car is definitely gonna be like the WRXs, like the Wranglers, things like that, and hold their value like crazy because it's gonna turn into some kind of a collective car. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> so coming from the owner, the turning radius is shit apparently. But that's what you get in most all-wheel drive cars. Uh, some problems I've read about with these is the rear differential overheating on like track use. That's no problem if you're everyday driving it. After driving this for 10 minutes, whatever, and doing two pulls, it feels great, but I definitely would suggest possibly an exhaust and an intake and maybe a tune, because I feel like it would go and make a world of a difference. Like, it already pulls like crazy, but it would be like ridiculous with that. He might get mad at me for saying this, but I wish they kept the five cylinder, even though they didn't sell it here. Five cylinder, I think, was a very unique engine for this car. It was a Volvo five cylinder, but the sound was just so unique, like you didn't hear it. But they never sold it in the States, or actually, I don't think anywhere besides Europe. Um, but I mean, you can't complain with a 2.3 liter making 350 horsepower and equal torque, so. So as far as competitors and things like that, now that the Lancer Evolution is gone after the 10th version, this is going to be a major competitor in the all-wheel drive turbo cars 
competing against pretty much the SDIs. So it's going to be interesting to see what manufacturers do now that these are gaining popularity, especially people up here where you could drive through the snow, take it on track, drift this thing, which is awesome. Um, and there's a couple things out there like the Civic Type R and stuff like that, but that's more front wheel drive. So we'll really see where this goes. It's such a new car that it could really go anywhere. So, so Nick's put about 2,100 miles on it. He's owned it since May. Yep, he's owned it since May and shows that he drives the car. Um, that's awesome. I know he's told me he's taken it on some awesome roads up in the mountains and stuff like that. So that's the point of these things. Some people buy them for collector cars, but you gotta drive it. You gotta drive these things. So as always, subscribe. Um, thanks again to Nick. Uh, the Facebook page for Local Low is up. The Instagram is up. If you have a car that you'd like us to review, we'd be more than happy to. Anything goes. Thanks for watching and uh, keep boosting on.